All right, we are ready to go. So thank you so much to everybody who has logged in. Let me just tee us up here for our conversation and then we will be uh, we will be jumping into a fascinating conversation. Welcome to Realogy's Brokerage Expert Series. Today, the real estate year in review, and perhaps more broadly, just the year in review that we have all uh, uh, navigated so well and uh, been able to uh, create some great accomplishments, challenges notwithstanding, plus a little glimpse at 2021. I'm your host, Matthew Ferrara, and we appreciate you spending this hour with us. Many of you, we can see, are, uh, are regular to the program. So we really uh, appreciate you being with us. And for those of you, this is your first time. This is an interactive conversation. We're going to uh, pose some questions to our guests, but we really want you to also ask questions as we go. Put them in the Q&A box and we'll see them and we will do our very best to get as many of them as possible integrated right into the conversation at the timing that's just right for them. We also encourage anyone who's watching the recording, if you have any questions or comments to reach out to us by email afterwards, we are more than happy to, uh, to connect you with our guests and uh, to also help you in some way. So let's not uh, take any longer to start this conversation. We appreciate our guests today. And let me just do a quick introduction um, of two people who are well-known leaders in our industry and certainly uh, have uh, some insights and knowledge that is hard to otherwise find uh, uh, in duplicate out there. So it's so special to be able to have them with us here today. Um, first is Ryan Schneider. He is, of course, the Chief Executive Officer and President of Realogy Holdings Group. Just a little bit about his background for you. He, he became CEO and President in 2017 uh, in, at Realogy and uh, joined the company uh, in that capacity after 15 years of senior leadership at Capital One Financial Corporation, where he had a variety of roles, including president of Capital One's card division, which was the largest uh, business at Capital One, overseeing the consumer and small business credit lines across the United States, United Kingdom, uh, and Canada. He has also, in addition to his business career, had substantial public policy and regulatory uh, affairs uh, involvement, including meeting with sitting presidents and testifying in front of Senate uh, subcommittees and committees. And he was uh, previously a partner at McKinsey and Company, many of you know, where he specialized in financial services clients. He has a BA in economics from Williams College and a PhD in economics from Yale. So we're thrilled to have Ryan with us today. Thanks for being uh, on today's session. Also me, with Matthew. us... Uh, good to see you, Ryan. Also with us is, um, is Stefan Swanepoel, also no stranger to any of you in the real estate industry. He is the chairman and CEO of T360, and he is widely recognized worldwide as a leading visionary of real estate trends. With more than four decades of experience in this business at a very high level, he's been the CEO of nine different companies, two nonprofit organizations, and has authored over 50 books, the latest of which is the current uh, Real Estate Trends Report. I hope all of you have these as soon as they hit the press. Um, I certainly have dozens of them on the on the shelf myself. Uh, he's also appeared in 22 bestseller lists, including the New York Times, Wall Street Journal, USA Today, and Amazon. Has a BS in science and a master's degree in economics. So we have definitely powerhouse in economics in today's panel, and also diplomas in arbitration, computer science, and business mergers and acquisitions. So Stefan, thanks for hanging out and being part of today's uh, conversation as well. My so pleasure. Gentlemen, Thank you for the invite. Glad to be here. You bet. So, gentlemen, let's um, let's start with the part of the program that is a little bit of a look back. Uh, twenty twenty. I think it is safe to say. Uh, you know, this is a period where many of our guests are doing a business planning and planning ahead. And I'm guessing that last year at this time, they were doing the same thing. And I'm pretty sure nobody would have thought 2020 would have turned out the way they planned it last year. I don't know that anyone had a pandemic and their SWOT analysis, that's for sure. But let me start with Ryan for a second here and just say, when you look back at this year and you look at both the challenges and the accomplishments, you know, what's your sense of what we have experienced and been able uh, to, to do both in our business and maybe just in society at large, Ryan. Well, again, Matthew, it's great to be here and Stefan, great to, to see you virtually uh, again. Boy, you know, um, 2020 has been an amazing year. Where I would start is 
the pride I have in our industry in terms of how well this industry did taking care of, of customers safely uh, while still actually doing what they needed to make their lives better, which is getting into and out of homes. Um, our industry, I think, also took a good job taking care of our agents and taking care of each other through that process. And you know, it leads actually to the power of the agent in this industry. And you know, the death of the agent and the, the disruption of the agents and everything else is all over the world often in times. But when you look at reality, not only is it not happening, but I'll bet when the book on 2020 is written, it'll actually show that agents actually drove more value in 2020, helping people through these you know, rare, high dollar, critical life transactions. And by the way, that's at a time when a lot of other business models in real estate shut down iBuyers weren't buying and selling homes, right? You know, other discount models weren't working, but agents in our business kept pushing forward, taking care of their customers, building those relationships and helping make people's lives better. So I was greatly both proud of that as an industry, but also excited for what it means for those of us who work closely with and believe in the power and the value creation of the, uh, of the agent model. You know, it's, it's a fascinating perspective because when we do think back and we think about what we might have been worried about a year ago and then what actually w caught our attention, we had to be focused on this year, it, it does seem like, you know, we might have been focused on stuff that really didn't cause as many challenges for us this year. And then we forgot uh, how much good work we can do and how much work we do under tremendous circumstances. I frequently say this business's middle name is solving problems. You know, we do it in the best of times and we certainly do it in challenging times. Stefan, I guess the same question really is to you. You know, you have, similar to Ryan, the ability to engage and look at the industry at this very, very high level across not only North America, but globally. When you think about what we've experienced this year, what are some of the highlights and uh, and, and things that stick out in your mind. Matt, most certainly nobody planned for a pandemic, but at the same time, we planned for growth and opportunity and customer service and, and profitability. And I think we were still able to achieve that. And I think many did achieve that. I think if anything, the last year has strengthened um, the industry's independence. It has increased most people's determination. Um, we should understand that we are as an industry more adaptable than we think, than we give credit to ourselves. Stop worrying. I don't know what's all this crap about everybody worrying all the time. Uh, yes, there are things that are thrown in front of you which you did not expect. That's business, grow up. You're better than you think. You're better with technology than you think. And if you put your head down, uh, you can probably still, even in despite presidential elections and protests and pandemics and all the things starting with a P. Um, despite all of that, you can probably still make profit, right? P is not a bad word, you know, look for the good P. Change is, is awkward, but it is actually easy. It, it is, it's growing up, right? It's just growing up. So I think that uh, truth, truth be told, real estate actually thrives on change. We thrive on solving problems and solutions, as you said. So we, we like to complain about it, but we're actually good at it. We're actually good at it. And I think our brokers proved this year on so many levels, in so many companies, with so many initiatives, that guys, if you want to put your shoulder against something, there is very little you can't do. Very little you can't do. You know, I think it's a great way to kick off our conversation is to have a sense of pride and a sense of perhaps a moment just to say kudos, you know, good job to ourselves for stepping up. Good job to also how as an industry we connected. I mean, this very series itself is a wonderful example of how when the industry needed access to ideas and encouragement from its leaders, Realogy said, let's flick the switch. What can we do? Let's bring people together, you know, at the highest levels, you know, not only in terms of, uh, of, of practical, but also visionary and leadership level uh, uh, content. So I do think it's great that we've been, we've been able to accomplish so much. Let me ask then, let me flip the question over. And when we look at this year in terms of not only dealing with successfully challenges, what have been the exciting things that we've actually been able to put into place? Where was that innovation or that opportunity maybe that the pandemic gave us 
permission to get something done that we had been waiting on or just nibbling at the edges of. Ryan, let me go to you with that because I know at Realogy, you know, this last year has not been one of just dealing with the problems. It's also been sort of, you know, pedal to the metal, if you will, with creating innovation, change, and growth. Well, you know, thank you, Matthew. First off, uh, for those of you who haven't seen it, uh, I hope you get to check out the uh, you know, Swain Pool uh, Trends Report and its chapter on Realogy. I think Stefan is a tough but fair uh, assessor of companies. And, you know, he used the word revitalization. Um, and a lot of what we've been trying to do at Realogy in the past couple of years is leverage our market leading position in both owned and franchise brokerage, leverage our tech and data, uh, our great brands, and our agent power to really you know, change the world, grow our business, et cetera. And we loved how in the third quarter of 2020, this came to fruition. We had a record economic quarter. We gained market share. We had, you know, substantial franchise expansion. Um, and why it came together was some of the efforts that you're talking about, Matthew, that helped us, you know, revitalize through that. So for example, we invested a ton in technology in 18 and 19 in multiple ways digital marketing products for agents, uh, you know, new value proposition products for agents, new lead generation programs. We invested in you know, uh, digital notarization. We did a new mortgage joint venture with a uh, you know, contactless flash closed product. And bluntly, a lot of those things rolled out and they got a little bit of adoption, but they didn't get massive adoption. But then COVID came, the world changed, people became much more digital willing to do things differently. And we saw a rocket ship happen in our adoption of these things. We saw a rocket ship in our ability to grow title and mortgage closings and help our franchisees grow title and mortgage closings because we had invested in advance in those great digital tools. We saw our agents gain market share because we had a virtual suite of products that was just there ready for people to use. Virtual staging, virtual open houses, virtual tours. And so, you know, while the pandemic first wave was an unprecedented leadership challenge, which I think Realogy and the real estate industry rose to. I have been equally proud and impressed by what we've done to capture some of the market strength and shift some of that market strength to us as a company and our brands because of those kind of revitalizing investments we've been focused on for the last couple of years. And to see them come to fruition in a record economic quarter and market share gain was really, really exciting. Um, and we love what's happening, not just with those, but with our franchise expansion, because we're here to make our agents and franchisees successful. We only succeed if they succeed. So we're real proud of that and what it means for as we revitalize our company and, and, and you know, lead this industry. So Stefan, I'm going to um, ask you to pick up on that in just a second, but let me see if I can connect a few dots. One of the one of the key things I just took away from what Ryan was saying is that, you know, a lot of this year's success is also being ready for the moment. The investments made in 2017, 18, 19, you know, we often have to make long bets in this business so that when the timing is right and when the need is there, we're we're ready. We're not catching up. You know, and one of the things that you said in the in your in your chapter in the current trends report on Realogy was, and I just want to read this quote because I, I, I would love for you to sort of expand upon that. You know, you say in many ways, Realogy defines the residential real estate brokerage industry. It operates as the nation's largest brokerage and franchise company. And although many stressors have impacted the traditional model and dramatically squeezed the giant in many ways, new leadership has implemented aggressive revitalization strategy. And then you go on to chronicle that a little bit. Now, what I'd love for you to, to pick up on is not only that the success of, of the revitalization, but how does that fit into the landscape? How does that fit into the overall landscape that you're also able to see, you know, as you are really writing the trends of the industry as well as Realogy? Hmm, Long-winded question there, which I think I got the pieces. Tell me if I miss a piece. Business, in my opinion, is like chess. It's not just about one good move, right? It is a cohesive plan that, that uses all the pieces on the board. And in the case of business, all of your resources, whether those are subsidiaries or cash or technology or talent, to use all your pieces to further your ultimate goal, vision, mission, plan, target, whatever the leadership decides it is, it is to be. Um, 
often you find in industries that the the dominant player, the, the player with the biggest market share, is often the one that gets hurt the most. They're the easiest target, right? <laughs> if, if, if you just threw a dart in real estate, there's a very, very good chance you're going to hit Realogy because they're everywhere, right? right. They, they own more franchise brands. They have more agents. I mean, so the Realogy is to a very large extent, as I said there, they are the industry. So, so, so when the industry goes through pain, when the industry goes through change, when the industry gets attacked, by definition, the biggest player gets attacked because they are the industry. Some big players in many industries, I, I know we like to refer to, to, to maybe a blockbuster or borders, many big players don't acknowledge the attack or they don't respond to the attack, or they respond too slowly to the attack, mm -hmm. or they respond in a small measure to the attack. And maybe the, the blow which they got, you know, from the Viking uh, Ragnar took them out, right? Just took them out. In this instance, I think Realogy could have gone that path. They, they most certainly had the market share potential to have a bloody consequence. But I think that's not the case here. I think that that Realogy's leadership, and of course, specifically Ryan and his team, but they they acknowledged that there was stress, that there was change, that there was innovation, that there was uncertainty, that there were new models, some which they understood, some which they liked, some which they didn't like, some which none of us understood, right? So there was a lot of things going on. And they said, we're going to try some stuff. We're going to do some stuff. We're going to do the, We're going to do the stuff which we're good at. And then we're going to do some new stuff, which we probably don't quite yet know how that's going to work out, but we are going to play with all of our chess pieces. And if we don't have all of our chess pieces, we'll buy some more pieces and we'll put them on the board <laughs> and we'll get them together, right? right? That's what a good leader does in a time of confusion and attack, is, is not give up, not just take the blow and fall down and right. retreat, is to say, how do I, how do I fight back? And I think Realogy is trying very, very hard to do that and has proven that they've been successful on numerous levels. On some levels, it's still too early to tell, of course, but, but because 2020 did, did Brian was right, uh, Brian was right. It, it, it accelerated some things in 2020. And in some cases, it muddied the water a little bit. So it's hard, it's hard to tell. We probably need a, another couple of months or a year to be able to look back with 2020 with clear vision. It's so not let quite me easy to see it. Ryan, you want to jump in on that? Yeah, I'd love to. I'd love to add on that. I sure. Push from Stefan. Look, we welcome the competition, and we welcome you know, and, and we would not trade our market leading position for anything, even if it does invite you know the kind of competition that um, Stefan talks about. And part of the reason we think it's important to not just address the fact that you know there's always going to be competition and new ideas, but as a market leader, you better be the one trying to lead the transition to it. Is um, is we have a lot of people we need to make successful and bring along with us. And one thing I think everyone should remember is how unconsolidated this business is. You know, we said we are the market leader in owned and franchise, but even across all of Realogy, we only have 15% of the market. It's much less concentrated than, than other industries. And when you watch industries consolidate over time, what you see happen is that consolidation sometimes gets driven by the fact that as technology advances and data becomes more important, you know, and brand becomes more important, um, you know, if if you don't have the resources to invest in those things, if you don't have the resources to build those things, you end up with an industry with haves and have-nots, and the have-nots go away. And that's why, you know, for us, even in the depths of COVID, when we provided franchisees a substantial amount of relief uh, on the fee front. Uh, and, you know, we did a lot of things on temporary cost reductions uh, in our back office. We did not stop investing in the kind of technology that I described that helped drive our really strong performance in the last quarter. We did not stop investing in our growth and our brand expansion across all of our six different franchise brands. And so, um, you know, as a market leader, not only have to confront the threats, but you got to remind people that, the winners in American business are typically market leaders who and, and others who are very large who can help drive that consolidation because it is technology, data, brand, things that scale helps you with that are increasingly differentiating the winners versus losers in American business. And we are so excited by you know, the starting position we have. We welcome those challenges and we wanna you know, use that, that push 
to, um, you know, to help others stay on the winning side of this awesome industry. So let me uh, pick up on both of those comments. And also, uh, we've got some questions coming in from our audience. I'm going to go to those in just a minute, but I want to widen the scope just for a moment. And I think, Ryan, what you just said helps us widen that scope. You know, being in a dominant position and, and re responding to change is one thing, but also seeing change and then being ready to capitalize on it and to lead the trends is another thing. Now, one of the biggest things that happened, not just to real estate, but to the society at large, the world at large this year has been the technological ease with which work from home, work from anywhere has become a, a, a real business factor today, whether it's brokers being able to consistently list and sell and service uh, 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 real estate brokerage from home, or whether it's just the public being able to live uh, anywhere they want to and still continue to keep the economy going and, and, and grow. How, how do both of you see, you know, the work from anywhere impact on real estate going forward? We're seeing a lot of encouraging indicators. You know, people might be more interested in relocation, more interested in mobility, more interested in uh, uh, perhaps even working with firms that aren't necessarily uh, within driving distance or commuting distance. There's so many impacts that work from anywhere might have on real estate going forward. You know, any thoughts um, there, Stefan, in terms of uh, whether th that might actually be a, a wonderful new factor for us in, in real estate industry growth and success? Ryan said something that you would expect a CEO of multiple brands to say, and that is that brands are becoming more important. But as an independent consultant, I'm going to echo and say I agree with that. I, I think that the consumer um, now has a choice to work with a larger selection of brands or companies that they know, understand, trust, have a confidence level, where in some cases in the past, not always, in some cases in the past, they worked with certain people because pure convenience, right? We've, we've heard NIR many times say that they would like to have a realtor in, in every neighborhood. We're probably not going to have a neighbor, a realtor in every, in every street, maybe even one day in every home, right? So, so being a realtor is not, not, I don't want to say it's not a big deal, but it's not a big deal, right? It's, it's now dealing with those companies that can offer you the one-stop cradle to grave, soup to nuts, integrated, full stop, guaranteed um, money back kind of service that, that we have become accustomed to in so many other parts of our life, right? Now the airlines are saying, you can change international flights, we'll waive the change fees. Home Depot says you can bring anything back you want to, right? So no, we don't want to give houses back. I'm not saying that by any stretch, but, but we are saying that the bigger the companies become, whether they are the religious or many of the other companies that have now gone public as well, because we have now more than a dozen companies in our space that are public. As compared to 20 years ago, we did not have that. As the companies become bigger, they are solidifying their positions as market makers and changers. All right, we're probably not going to see a new airline pop up and take over the industry. We're not probably going to see a new bank pop up and take over the banking industry, right? So we can probably say the chances that that Bank of America and Wells Fargo and City and Chase are probably going to be the four big banks, right? Delta, American Airlines is probably going to be the two, if you want to put United in there, the two or three big airplane. I think we're getting to that consolidation stage, which Brian also spoke about. We still have a long way to go, but we are clearly on that path. And we have taken big leaps. It's like we graduated from high school, right? We're, we're no longer in a high school backyard brawl. We're, we're trying to get out of that. And we're, we're becoming almost adults now <laughs> as an industry. We're, we're almost becoming grown up. And, and you can see it. You can feel it in the industry. I know some companies already feel that way. But if you look at the industry as a whole, we are rapidly changing from this very, 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 very fragmented mom and pop cottage, one man show business. And I know there are still thousands of those out there and they will still be there for a decade, right? They won't go away, but you can see that the market share, the acknowledgement, the investment, the capital, the, the market makers, the decision makers are slowly but surely consolidating into a handful, maybe two handfuls of, mm -hmm. of leaders, mm -hmm. which will most likely, most likely, Dominate the, dominate the space for the next decade or two. 
Ryan. You know, let me address a different angle on that. You know, the, the world has changed pretty dramatically. Your work from home points an example of that. But, you know, I think we should all understand, and, and I'll just tell you my view on it, which is we are all benefiting right now from a bunch of societal changes that, um, that are driving, you know, changes in home ownership, of which that's one component, right? With our national business across our brands, we're clearly seeing people move from, you know, urban to suburban markets. We're seeing people rotate within suburban markets because they want different things out of their house, often driven by work from home. And we're also seeing an acceleration of the existing trend to get people to the Floridas, Texas, Arizonas, Idaho's, the more attractive tax and weather destinations. And, you know, I, I've seen the economic reports that people say 20 million people will probably move because of remote work to get to your question. And that's awesome for us, right? As an industry, that's right. fantastic. Um, but it also actually gets back to the consolidation point that Stefan was, was making, which is in that world, you know, you know, we and our brands benefit in two ways. One is by having the critical mass we have, bluntly, there are a huge number of deals being done before properties ever come to market mm -hmm. um, because of this of the high demand going on right now. And, you know, the more you're part of a network, a bigger network of brands, either uh, you know, locally in particular, the more you can help your customers to be part of that. The other is with a lot of the moving uh, to many different geographies, including distant ones, being part of some sort of a network or brand that has the kind of referral business across state lines, across bigger geographies, you know, we are seeing help drive more volume for our agents and franchisees. So we're all benefiting business-wise from this remote work trend. I believe it's a trend, not just a bubble. Um, and, you know, I think it's another example of a place where larger branded businesses in our industry will benefit more than, you know, the average. Uh, and uh, it's part of another way the consolidation stuff on talked about will continue to happen. Good points. Great points. Um, I want to try and get some of our participant questions in here. So I'm going to try and fit them into the conversation. Also, just, uh, you know, we've got a, a more than 100 people uh, listening and a bunch of them rolling in. So we'll see if we can make a theme out of them if we can. One of the questions I think is a, is a big uh, a, a, a trend, as you said, and not just a bubble uh, that can have both positive growth as well as growing pains uh, for us to deal with in the business. Uh, revolves around teams. So the teams phenomenon in real estate is certainly not new anymore, but it's definitely huge. I mean, the top 30 to 50 teams in America controlled almost $15 billion in volume last year, uh, you know, and, and tens of thousands of transactions, actually. And that's just the top 30, let alone the top 200 or the top 1000, etc. So, you know, from both the the perspective of Realogy across its brands, which have great, you know, teams present in them and, and has systems and tools and, and uh, many affiliated brokers who are hyper successful with them. You know, where do you see the team uh, uh, model fitting in, Ryan, uh, in terms of growth in the business as well as in Realogy's life? And obviously, Stefan, I'm sure you've seen um, the ripple effect of this as well. But let me start with Ryan on this. Well, we definitely need to get to Stefan's cross-industry perspective of this because because he sees a broader spectrum than I do. But look at Realogy, you know, two things. One, we're very pro-team. Uh, you know, that uh, the growth in business done by teams has outpaced the growth in you know the rest of the business and the business overall. And we right. love that, and we're here to support teams. And you know, each of our brands has a a slightly different value proposition, but all of them are very pro uh, team. And then, you know, second, we love, you know, how teams bring new, new people into the ecosystem, um, you know, in ways that isn't just getting their license and sending them off on their own. We think it can be a healthier way to, to, to uh, source the next generation of real estate talent uh, compared to just, you know, getting a license again and, and starting your own business, you know, kind of all on your own. And we like that because this industry, you know, both on the uh, agent and on the franchisee side, you know, clearly needs to do more effort to bring in more into the population, especially on the younger side, even on the diverse side. But we like the role teams play in that. We like the role teams play in the business, and we're here to support them uh, any way that we can. Team, Stefan? Uh, teams are cool. They're, they're awesome. 
but they 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 were that growth phase 2015 to 2019. Mm -hmm. uh, they're now already the new normal. I mean, so get with the program, right? I mean, Teams is here. It's it's part of our business. I mean, in this year's trends report, number chapter number two, trend number two, right? right. We dedicated a whole chapter on what we're calling uh, the lead lead generation focused business opportunity. Whether whether you you push or drive or manage that, that from a team perspective, or whether you actually now do it within your business, we've we've seen we've seen those two starting to morph closer and closer together. There are there are teams which look like companies. There are teams that have become companies. There are companies that now look like teams. There are companies which only hire teams. I'm not even sure that it's sometimes easy to distinguish between the difference of them in some cases. And the numbers you quoted are of course large. Uh, when you when you transpose over an industry or over big franchise companies, um, it's still a relatively small number. <laughs> I mean, so some of the big franchises, you know, do two, three hundred billion a year. So when you say 15 billion, yeah, yeah that's a, it's a nice number. Teams are great. Teams are awesome. Uh, and I think we should, we should acknowledge that it is a significant driver of our industry, but it is by no means the most important driver of our industry at the moment. And by no means is it changing the industry, but it is riding the wave of the change in our industry, the, the corporatization, the going public, the customer service, the technology, the independence, the growing of the brands, uh, Teams is part of that, that wave. And I think if we look at all the different things that contribute to redefining what our industry is, could be, will become, um, we will probably look back at the year 2012 to 2020 as a period of time in which we actually pulled a plug on some of the old traditional real estate things. And we said, we've had it with this old stuff and we're heading towards new stuff. And, and that that includes teams, right. but that, in, that also includes some of the tech stuff, some of the outside money stuff, some of the going public stuff. They're, they're all washed together. And because there's still a lot of uncertainty, not, not that those trends are not important, but there's uncertainty, which one gets what market share and which one's the best. I think they're still a little meshy together. We're still trying to figure it out, but teams are cool. That's the new normal. Play with it. So Stefan, let me let me piggyback then right on that, uh, that that sort of um, you know there's a lot of things that are changing and shaping industry our industry. There's a lot of things that are actually rising to the fore, and I just I continue to love this perspective that you have of the maturation. You know whether it's a maturation in terms of operations or as Ryan was saying a moment ago in terms of necessary areas of consolidation to maximize the effort and the capital, the people we have in here. One of the areas in which the industry is rapidly growing and doing good work in but probably has a lot of work yet to be done is in diversity and inclusiveness both in terms of uh, representation of, uh, of ethnic and diverse groups in our operations, but also our engagement with diverse groups uh, in the public. So being focused on uh, African-American, LGBTQ, uh, Asian, Hispanic uh, su subsets of our, of, our, of our communities in, in, in which you know, we're, we're actively helping people buy and sell homes, but we aren't necessarily yet you know fully uh, uh, leveraging the power we have uh, you know in, in in the industry to engage those groups talk to us a little bit about that aspect of the evolution and going forward for the industry you danced around the very delicate issue very discreetly and very nicely Matt <laughs> um, if I could be a little bit more blunt as you know I sometimes can be we suck at it we, we do not do a good job at diversity. Hence, not only is it a trend in the upcoming trends report where we try and talk about it. I, I did some work for NIR. NIR commissioned us to do extensive research for them on what we've done as an industry on diversity, minorities, um, and, and the whole spectrum of that. And then we also did the research for our own trends report. Um, and we, we have spoken extensively to the largest minority associations on numerous occasions to try and get our hands around it. And, and although this is just a graphic representation, <laughs> I, try to, I try to go back to 1900 and I said, what, what have we done or, or not? What have we done from a legal point of view, from an act point of view, from an association point of view, from realistic point of view, from an initial point of view? Um, and, and where do I think things happened that maybe shifted or changed or changed the direction and caused something more or better to happen 
And unfortunately, there's not a lot, Matt. There's not a lot that we could look back at and actually have many highlights. There are, of course, a few, but, but, but not, not many. Um, so I think the heart of the industry is at the right place. Mm -hmm. I, I honestly believe after interviewing one-on-one -on -one and in groups and in focus groups, over 200 people just in the last three months with only two or three questions every time, and they were all diversity related. So I was trying to, with no agenda, find out the good, the bad, the ugly. Um, I think that the majority of people's heart is at the right place. The majority of people want to do the right thing. The majority of people don't really know what the right thing is mm -hmm. from a total or a global point of view. We right. understand from an individual point of view, helping the neighbor, helping the person across the street, not discriminating, being fair to everybody, giving everybody equal opportunity. We understand that. We all, uh, strange enough, not everybody, but, but a fair amount of people understand the Fair Housing Act and what you could actually do and not do legally, although although some people were confused about that. I think uh, I think it's a it's an institutional legacy problem which we have. There unfortunately are are many laws, many structures, many boards, many companies, many committees, many associations, where we are still carrying structures and votes and people and names and places of things that we did somewhere in the past. Mm. Um, and and a certain group wants uh, to berate that. And a certain group just wants to say, let's close that chapter and move on. <laughs> but most of us are looking for new initiatives to try and do something. And I think that the industry is ready. And I think the industry is very willing and wants to do something. Um, I think it's going to be a very heavy lift if we want to make something stick right. throughout the country. And unfortunately, I think it's going to be a one generation solution if we do something with full commitment with full support and we stick to it i think it's a generational solution meaning 25 years mm -hmm. if we if we you know poo poo it or pop it or or just do it a little bit we'll do a few little small wins here or there and i think in 10 or 20 years we'll still sit with somewhat somewhat of the same problem some challenges yep. Ryan, i know I'm, that gonna, I'm, I'm gonna be more optimistic about that now. yeah i was i'm not because I think it's easy or I disagree with the historical challenges, but, you know, given the situation, you got to just start taking action and making progress. And, you know, for me, there's a couple themes. One theme is, you know, I'm all about growing the business, growing Realogy, growing our brands, et cetera. And, you know, if, if, if we can do things that's good for business and helps on this front, that's a powerful combination. You know, we've launched an inclusive ownership program. We're gonna we're gonna expand it across all of our brands, where you know we actually waive some of the franchise fees for you know diverse uh, franchisees, especially startup ones. But we also provide coaching uh, and mentorship to help because we think there's a business opportunity not just to bring more diverse franchisees into our ecosystem, but to reach more of the customers out there. The second thing is, I think we've got a generational challenge. I referred to it earlier, right? You know, we need to bring in the next generation of real estate agents, the next generation of real estate owners, the next generation of real estate, you know, employees, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and that is going to be a more diverse group of people and should be just because of how the population, you know, of that next generation looks in our country. And so, you know, I'm excited to do it for that benefit too. Um, and so, you know, whether it's our Century 21 Empowering Latinas program that has, has you know, helped people become agents and place them with great franchi franchisees or inclusive ownership program or some of the work we do with the different um, uh, real estate agent associations, um, there's work to be done. And, the, and my solution is you just go start doing it. Uh, and I'm, I'm proud of some of the stuff that we're doing. Uh, we want to do more. We're looking for ideas. But um, uh, it's, it's worth doing, uh, not just, not for just some social mission reason it's worth doing because I think it's good for business and will help grow our company. And, and, you know, I'm all about growing our company any way I can. And, Matt, and, I'm gonna and we can, I'm gonna, we, we, we can do well here. by, by doing good at the same time, I guess. Right. I mean, I think that's, that's definitely, um, possible. Stefan, you want to jump into there? Yeah, I'm going to chip in just because I, I want to, to agree, but disagree with Ryan from the point of view. That, that I even featured Realogy in the report as one of the five companies that we found that does the most. So, so acknowledge the good stuff that Ryan is doing. I'm saying it's 
it's uh, it's a little that we're doing as an industry collectively. Yes, there are a half a dozen or a dozen companies doing good stuff. It is still, even if I had to question, you know, Ritigy and say, how many of your franchisees are, you know, in the diversity category? It's a small number because of where, we, where we've come from. And to get it to where we want is going to be something which is going to take a long push. It's not something which Ryan or anybody else or NAR can, can fix just because they feel good about it. Let's do something today. We should, of course, do something about it. But it is going to take a 10 year push where we all agree to support and to continue doing the right thing because we have a lot of work that needs to be done to to even make a meaningful dent right but I, I, good work needs to be done absolutely well and i think that you know overall the the good news i guess is that everyone here and also everyone listening re recognizes that there is work to be done that we're not turning a blind eye to the work to be done and we're doing what we can now uh, hoping that that will create momentum. It's also quite encouraging that many um, uh, associations within this industry have grown so rapidly in the past five to 10 years. So the NAREPs and the, the um, you know, ARIAs and other associations that we can both engage and take guidance from and participate with, but also uh, can, uh, can, can amplify the effects that we're doing at our individual companies and in individual marketplaces as well. So it is certainly worth our effort though. That is, that is true. We have about 12, 12 minutes before um, we're going to wrap up. So I would love to shift the conversation towards a little, uh, you know, outlook for 2021. And we use that term, you know, very generally here, sort of how are we feeling 2021 is going to uh, go without having to predict the universe, but I would love to get some of your thoughts, gentlemen, in terms of where both the industry is going from a marketplace and productivity standpoint, and also just more generally as a leader in uh, the industry, how you're feeling, um, you know, in terms of your overall optimism for the, the very rapidly approaching new year. So Stefan, let me start with you. There is no way to look at real estate but to be optimistic. Clearly, our industry is going through a, a growth spurt, a change, a corporatization, a technology changes. But, but of the 50 books, 53 books I've written, uh, 50 of them were about trends. They were about change. So this is not a new topic for me. And, and, and if I go back to my first one, which was 1987, there was growth and change and innovation then, right? And, and then when you wrote about it again in 88 or 89 or 90, 91, 92, we've always been at this point. What's different, if I look back over 50 books and say, can I have a snapshot of every year is there seems to be more activities happening at this point in time, simultaneously of significant size and scope. Things that happened before, the creation of franchising in the, in the late 60s, early 70s was major. The creation of the 100% concept in the mid 70s. The creation of, of the team concept back, probably back in the 1980s, early 2000s. The, the, the growth of mergers and acquisitions, which Rilogy did very, very well in the 1990s. Um, so there have, been many, there have been many growth spurts or changes or threats. We've handled them all. We've handled them all. And we will handle all of these as well. No, no question. Each one of those innovations and creations and changes created opportunities. Hence, there is no reason to believe that we are not yet again at a, a crossroad of opportunity. <laughs> and, and because there's probably more threats today and more changes and more innovation, there's more opportunity as well. Um, so, so do I think that we are going to continue uh, seeing more companies go public next year? Yeah, you know, Open Door is December 21, Compass is probably Q1, and we might have a Keller Williams next year, and I think we might have another three or four after that. So, so yes, we'll continue with that, with that spurt. Will we see consolidation? Yes. The Hannas have bought companies, Rilogy has bought companies, Compass has bought companies. So, so will there be an ongoing? We've now seen that now, not only with the brokerage companies and the franchises, we've started seeing with the tech companies, with the support companies, right? The, um, look at uh, MoxieWorks has done some acquisitions. Lone Wolf has done some acquisitions. Uh, Greg Robertson from W&R has just sold. Stephen Murray from Realtrends has just sold. So, so yeah, even on the support services, we are seeing consolidation take place where the whole industry is maturing. Good thing. I think brands are becoming stronger. Good thing. I think big companies like the Rilogies 
the compasses, the Keller Williams, even the even some of the uh, associations are putting more and more dollars into technology. If we just learn how to use it and we just implement it, good thing. Um, the fact that we are bringing the transaction more together in a, we'd like to believe more streamlined. Uh, we've been talking about this for how long now, Matt? <laughs> 20 years, 25 years? So we, we haven't quite got there, but it actually looks like the generation of leadership under, I'm going to say under Ryan, but but the leadership of today's generation, I actually think they're going to pull it off. Where previous leaders did, were not able to pull it off, maybe because the real estate industry wasn't right, maybe the consumer wasn't right, maybe technology wasn't right. It now feels that all of the key players, constituents are right to allow and to enable technology to play a role. And I think COVID has accelerated this whole process so 2021, it's going to be a great ride. I think most companies are going to have a good year. I see no reason why real estate is going to be worse than it is this year. I think this year is going to beat all records from last year if you look at the numbers. And I think 2021 most likely will be a slightly better year than this year as well. Ryan, uh, it sounds like Stefan is describing a bit of a perfect storm uh, for us. So, you know, where, where is your mind going in terms of 2021 and maybe even beyond? Well, uh, three thoughts for you. The first thought is I'm optimistic about 2021 from an industry standpoint. We have a, a set of uh, social factors. We have low interest rates for a long time that I think is going to combine to give us, uh, you know, a positive push in the housing market. Which, you know, unlocking the housing market, getting it to like six million transactions a year, as opposed to the five that it's been stuck at, is very powerful for all of us. I'm optimistic on that dimension. I'm also very optimistic about the power of both um, uh, integrating the transaction, which if you've been watching us, you'll see our title and mortgage results show the success we're having with that, along with our core brokerage success, and the power of more of the type of technology things coming to fruition I talked about in our brands. And I think overall, again, if you know, I think the bigger companies are more likely to win or that people as, who are part of brand networks of bigger companies because of how those kind of requirements are going to become more of the norm for the consumer, especially through COVID. But, you know, I would say competition will remain fierce. And I think everybody should recognize that, you know, with an announcement a few months ago when Zillow said they were going to hire salaried agents, um, any illusions anybody had should, have been, should be shattered by that. And if you think those salaried agents are only going to work on, you know, I buying houses in two cities, uh, you haven't been watching the evolution of, of Zillow. Kudos to them for what they built, but let's be clear, they built their business on your backs, on the back of your agents, your listings, your agents' listings and your work, and they monetize that to their benefit, not yours, and now they've actually said they're going to hire agents, and you know, if you think they're not going to be competing with you and your agents for listings, then again, you have not been watching the evolution. And I come from financial services where we let PayPal get created um, and enabled it. And our industry here in real estate let Zillow get created and enabled it. And the fact that our industry with agents and brokers continue to feed them with financials and make payments to them and have not done more to take control and the power of your intellectual property that they are making money on is a bit sad. And I think it's the strategic challenge that's going to face all of us going forward. And I think it's going to be the biggest companies in the industry that will be best positioned to fight back against that. Um, but if you have not felt that or you think it doesn't affect you because it's not in your market yet, I think that's a very short-sighted thing. And I would encourage people to think very hard about how that strategically is going to play out in your market when you're competing with someone um, and your agents are competing with them in a different way than maybe historically um, and think about that for the future. So I'm very optimistic about 2021, but we need to be thinking about the challenges we face, whether they're health and safety challenges, whether they're new competitive challenges like I just highlighted. Um, but I'm a big believer in, in the quality of people in our industry and the power of the agent uh, and the um, uh, success that Realogy is teed up for, as we showed in the third quarter, and I'm hoping that we'll, you know, demonstrate not just in the fourth quarter of 2020, but in 2021. So I have uh, three minutes left on the clock, Stefan. I know you so well. I know you'd love to piggyback on that thought. Let me give you a minute, give Ryan a minute to uh, wrap us up here. But, you know, obviously lots of optimism from both of you, but some big uh, rocks to be uh, uh, addressed uh, on the horizon. Thoughts? 
optimism does not mean blind faith <laughs> that everything will go well. Sure. Uh, uh, Brian is right when he says that the competition will be fierce. Mm. Uh, whether you are a traditional company fighting for survival, whether you are a new company fighting for your spot in the sun or trying to find a client, um, those that deliver good quality service, Matt, it's like what you do as well. I'd like to believe it's what I do as well. If you do what you do well, hmm. whether you're a broker, a manager, a team leader, an agent, work for the association, work for MLS, if you do what you do well and you do it ethically, honestly, and with commitment and passion, you will absolutely succeed. I do believe that the good guys win. I absolutely believe that. And, and I think there are enough people like that in our space that we don't need one winner. Why, why our industry is so paranoid to always want to be, I'm the best, I'm the first, I'm the only. I get over that, again, excuse the word crap. Um, there is everybody, the market is the largest single market in the world of any business. We're bigger than agriculture, bigger than mining, bigger than, I mean, bigger than anything else. You guys have picked or by default accidentally fell into an industry. Be thankful that you're in this space. It is a wonderful space to be in. And let's let's work together. There's enough for everybody. <laughs> Ryan, let me give you uh, the last word on that. And then we'll uh, we'll close out today's session. I love businesses where we can grow the pie and everybody can win. Uh, and we are excited to, uh, you know, build on the success we just had, we've just been demonstrating, uh, especially with our technology and data uh, utilization, driving much, much better financials and the power of our brands showing up. If folks saw our Sotheby's and Corker and other uh, kind of successes that we've been able to talk about publicly. Um, most importantly, I'm wishing everybody a great holiday season uh, on making sure people take care of their physical, mental, and emotional health. I am so proud of how our companies and this whole industry has taken care of customers and help people get in and out of houses in this incredibly crazy year uh, with safety, with security, et cetera. And I'm optimistic about 2021 uh, and uh, really appreciate Matthew, your, your time today and everyone who took the time to listen with us. Well, thank you both so much today uh, for, for your insights, your thoughts and, and your praise and encouragement, which is just, as you said, is important for us to to not only be productive, but to be uh, healthy as well. And I think that uh, helps our mindset tremendously. So Chairman and CEO of T360, Stefan Swanepoel, thanks for spending this hour with us. And Ryan Schneider, Chief Executive Officer and President of Realogy, also thank you. Always good to see both of you, my friends, and thanks for sharing your ideas with uh, over 100 of our guests today. And thank all of you for your questions, your participation throughout all of this series. Many of you we see every single time. It's really wonderful to have been able to spend this year with you. We're looking forward to next year as well. So please keep your eye on our upcoming schedule. Have a wonderful holiday season. Stay healthy, stay safe. And uh, as you heard from our guests, stay optimistic because 2021 may be the best ever to come. I'm Matthew Ferrara for Realogy's Brokerage Experts. We'll see you next year.